So what I'm doing here is uh, putting these little resistors on as fuses and soldering them to the top. So this side's done. You can see the little bus wires, and these are all uh, in parallel. So the positive side, all these, it's a positive, negative, positive, negative. So you can see that's negative. That row's positive. This row is positive. This row is negative, and so on. Now, when I put these together, I'm going to need to put a resistor between these two because it'll complete the circuit. And these could potentially be different voltages, and they probably are. So this cell's probably three and a half. This one's probably four. This is probably 3.8. So to make sure they all balance, I'm going to stick a resistor or load between these two so that they uh, dump and balance. And I'll do the same thing here once these all balance. I can solder these up, and this will be one cell or three in parallel, essentially, right? And then these will be wired in series. So these three will be paralleled. They'll go down in series over. And these three will be paralleled and go down on up and down. So you end up with 18 and a half volts. But instead of having um, you know five amps of current, you'll have 15. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is grind these so that solder will uh, accept better. Just a very so slight grind. <laughs> this thing is not happy. Tighten it up. There we go. What we're trying to do here is get any contaminants off the top of the battery so that when we go to solder it, we uh, feel certain that the solder will take. And we can test that. This is a pretty hot iron, by the way, so it doesn't take long to melt the solder. Boom, we just need a little pad on there for the solder to connect to. Now, some Chinese manufacturers have a machine that does this. It doesn't solder them. It um, actually braids them or brazes them on uh, like a spot weld. But this is the poor man's way. You just don't want to put a lot of heat on the batteries. Uh, not really for fear that they'll explode, but more for fear that they will degrade. So you just have to be careful. Biggest thing here is just you know, don't short anything out or you, you might have a bad day. So we would do this. And... A little bit more solder. We got what, one cell to go. All right, and then we'll have to uh, put a load across these to help balance them out. So what I'm going to do now is put a 100-watt 4-ohm resistor across these things to help load balance the cells. And probably just for fun, I will get my meter over here and see how much current these things are drawing between cells. That'll help me tell how out of balance they are. If they're, you know, really bad... I'd be kind of curious to know how much current's flowing uh, through these things. Uh, let's see, milliamps. This thing does not do high current, does it? Nope. All right. So we essentially stick this in series with the load. And we pick any battery. We'll start with the top left one here. And just put it anywhere on this. And now I'm going to go across here, 105 milliamps. So it is dumping some, so they're not balanced. I don't know if you can see that or not on the, no, you can't, my hand's in the way. All right, let's try to balance some of this stuff out. we got a uh, juggling act going on here with a hot soldering iron. You don't want to uh, lose count of that. All right, soldering iron stable. Okay. Let's get this crap out of the way. Saturday night over here is making me nervous. All right. Let's see if we can't get some of this in the picture. Okay, there's the, there's the meter you can see now. So 
if these were balanced in theory when I short across there there'd be no current but you can see there's definitely current 100 milliamps that's how I balance those cells are that was only 61 milliamps so more than likely I'll have to keep this on for a while and let this current drop down until they become balanced and I also have a piece of electronic equipment that can do this but as long as you see current flowing through there then you know that's an imbalance between those two cells and this resistor will get warm, which it barely is as it balances out. Okay, you see all these resistors laying around. Um, so if we look at the current on these batteries, uh, when the measure of current flow, of course, dang, trying to get this meter working. <clears throat> We're looking at the potential difference of these batteries. So these batteries here and here were individually charged in a charger, but they're both charged up to the exact same voltage. So we would expect that um, there would be no potential difference, voltage difference between those cells. Therefore, there'll be no current flow between them. Uh, so if let's get this a little closer where we can see the meter. There we go. Can you make that out? Not really, a lot of glare. Okay, barely make it out. So these, of course, are shorted together with uh, uh, wire, resistor wire, so you don't see any current flow between those. So these, can we can say, are at the same potential. However, this battery was either uh, discharged or not fully charged up yet, so there's a, definitely a difference in voltage between this cell and this individual cell, which is, of course, now paralleled, but that just means the voltage is the same between these batteries now. They're both 3.65 volts each cell. So parallel, they're still 3.65 volts, but they're able to produce twice as much current. Anytime you put batteries in parallel, voltage stays the same, the current doubles. If these were in series, like these are wired 3.65 volts, you know, times five to get your 20 volts. Anytime you put a battery in series, you increase the voltage, the current stays the same. So if we look here, you'll see that there is almost one and a half amps of current flowing between these two if we were to short them out. So to keep from shorting them out, what I did was put a resistor in here. This is two ohms at 100 watts. So you can see current flows through the resistor into this battery. So it's like I put a resistor between here and here to allow them to discharge over time. So what's gonna happen is this is a higher voltage. It's gonna dump into this like it's a load. And then over a period of time, say 24 hours or so, a couple of days, these will all be at the same potential. When they are, I'll bridge this battery over so we'll have three batteries in parallel. So now we can produce three times as much current, you know, for each of these cells that are wired in series. So let's say this is a one amp battery. We'll now be able to produce three amps. So <clears throat> now maybe this whole pack will go from 18 volts at one amp to 18 volts at three amps capability, which will give us more power, more runtime on the equipment. And um, it's gonna look butchered up and I'm gonna, you know, tape it up and glue it up and granddaddy mason it and uh, hey, we shall be good to go. All right, let's get a little perspective on where we're at now. So um, you can see I've got a resistor here going across. I've paralleled some so it would speed up the process. But what we're looking for is we know these two have zero current between them because they've been shorted together since the uh, day one because they've all had, the again, the same amount of charge on those cells. So they're balanced. And now what we're trying to do is balance these. If we look, we can see there's just a minuscule amount of uh, current difference in those. A fair amount here so I still got the resistor on that one and this one's basically balanced this one's balanced and that one's balanced so this one is still a little bit out of balance but not a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and jumper a uh, resistor across there to bridge that and then we'll be further along in the process once we get all those balanced the last one we'll be able to tie them all together and test it out okay <clears throat> I uh, obviously finished soldering the um, tabs across here and I just covered up electrical tape put the bottom back on it so the next thing I'm gonna do is fabricate uh, with a 3d printer a case to go around this but the main thing is we did all this work and uh, we want to see if it works so we have to kind of hold it together but we should be able to put this uh, big boy here on there there we go
All right, I should be able to run that for some time. Project, I would say, complete success.